Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, a neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to discuss a very important cortical syndrome, Gerstmann syndrome. The Gerstmann syndrome which has got Alexia with agraphia and we are going to discuss another concept Alexia without agraphia. So it's going to be really exciting. On one hand we are going to discuss Alexia with agraphia and at the other end of the spectrum we are going to discuss Alexia without agraphia. Alexia is difficulty in reading. Agraphia means difficulty in writing. In Gerstmann syndrome, you have agraphia, difficulty in writing, which is the main component, along with alexia, difficulty in reading. But another interesting concept is that in left base PCA infarct, posterior cerebral artery infarct, we have Alexia without agraphia. That is, they have difficulty in reading but without agraphia. That is, they don't have difficulty in writing. In To put it in another way, the person who has just then written with his own knowledge, with his own handwriting is not able to read what he has just written it himself. Alexia without agraphia. So, very interesting, exciting and uh, really awesome. So we need to know the concepts behind this. How on one hand there is Alexia with agraphia and how on the other hand we have Alexia without agraphia. Right. To understand these seems to be difficult concepts, we need to understand two other principles. One the occipitoparietal cortex and the occipitotemporal cortex on one hand. Second, what is the actual function of the angular gyrus which we find it in parietal lobe. So, visual agnosia. What is visual agnosia? Persons are able to see the occipital cortex is good. Persons are able to see but there is a disconnection syndrome, a disconnection between occipital and parietal lobe or a disconnection between the occipital and temporal lobe. When there is a disconnection between occipital and parietal lobe, occipitoparietal cortex, there are problems with where, where the spatial analysis, where, where are the fingers, where is the, my, where are my body parts? where the spatial orientation is affected if there is a disconnection between occipital and parietal lobe. If there is a disconnection between occipital and temporal lobe, what form and color are affected? For example, I can see the face but I can't give meaning to the face. What is affected? An inability to recognize faces is called as prosopagnosia. These are all occipitotemporal lesions. But in this lecture, we are going to talk only about the occipitoparietal, that is where the spatial analysis is affected. We are going to talk about that. Occipitoparietal lesions, the Gerstmann syndrome. So, the basic concept to be understood is that in occipitoparietal lesions, where we have the Gerstmann syndrome, the spatial orientation where, where is affected. Right. The second important principle we need to understand is about the angular gyrus. Angular gyrus. It has got both the functions. Reading as well as writing. According to Geshwin, the angular gyrus has got both the functions. Reading and writing. How does angular gyrus help in writing? It turns the spoken language into written language. 
so angular gyrus turns the spoken language that is the language is heard or spoken into a written language that is writing so here occipital cortex is not needed whatever someone hears or whatever someone speaks can be turned into written language with the help of the angular gyrus so occipital cortex is not needed here very important point whereas for the reading again the angular gyrus is plays an important role in reading according to gethwin so angular gyrus is important both for writing and reading so angular gyrus is also important in reading how does it help in reading angular gyrus it turns the written language into spoken language so angular gyrus turns the written language into spoken language that is reading so it turns the written language into spoken language but to see the written language occipital cortex is necessary so to see the written language occipital cortex is necessary but to turn the written language into spoken language that is reading we need angular gyrus so according to gethwin angular gyrus is important for both reading and writing for writing the angular gyrus turns the spoken language into written language for reading the angular gyrus turns the written language which is visualized by occipital cortex into spoken language so these are two fundamental concepts occipital parietal lesions are responsible for spatial orientation where and angular gyrus is important both for reading and writing but for reading along with angular gyrus occipital cortex is also necessary right having understood these two principles now it is very easy to understand these two seems to be difficult topics alexia with agraphia and alexia without agraphia so to understand alexia with agraphia we we'll follow on with the gerstmann syndrome so in the gerstmann syndrome there is a lesion in the left angular gyrus that is the dominant parietal cortex as i said the parietal lobe is responsible for where the spatial orientation so in the gerstmann syndrome the unitary defect the one which unifies all the components of the gerstmann syndrome are in the spatial orientation so the unitary defect is in the spatial orientation of fingers if they have a difficulty in the spatial orientation of fingers you get finger agnosia so there are four important components of gerstmann syndrome one finger agnosia two confusion between the left and right sides of the body third achalia and fourth agraphia these are the four important components tetra and sometimes associated another component which we add is alexia difficulty in reading so these are the four important components the first three components are directly related to the spatial orientation a unitary defect in spatial orientation of fingers will cause finger agnosia inability to name different fingers of two hands they cannot name this as index finger this as middle finger this as thumb again a spatial problem with the spatial orientation spatial orientation of body sides if they have spatial orientation a difficult in spatial orientation of body sides they get confusion of the right and left sides of the body defect in the spatial orientation of numbers you get a calculia inability to calculate in fact if we have seen during our childhood we use fingers to calculate 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 or 1 plus 4 is equal to 5 5 minus 3 is equal to 2 so we associate fingers with ca calculation so all the more these two components get affected together in persons having angular gyrus defects so finger agnosia is followed along with a calculia so finger agnosia confusion of right and left side of the body a calculia is to do with the unitary defect in the spatial orientation finally the tetrad is the agraphia angular gyrus as i said according to gethwin angular gyrus is important both for right writing as well as reading for writing it turns the spoken language into the written language occipital cortex is not necessary that is writing so when the angular gyrus is affected they have 
A graphia difficulty in writing. They will also have alexia difficulty in reading because according to Geshwin, anger gyrus is responsible for both. Turning the spoken language into written language that is writing and turning the written language into spoken language that is reading where the oxygen context is necessary. So an anger gyrus is affected both A graphia and alexia result. So this is all about the Gerstmann syndrome. So the main four components tetrad are the finger agnosia, confusion of the right and left side of the body, acalcia, agraphia and associated with alexia. Now let me go to the other very fascinating and one of the frequently asked NCQ questions, favorite question of the examiners, alexia without agraphia. As the name suggests, Alexia, they have difficulty in reading without agraphia, but there is no difficulty in writing. So they can write, but they can't read what they have just written. How do we explain this? This can be explained with a lesion in the left occipital cortex, the PCA territory. But before I dwell into this subject, I just want a particular concept to be understood. Whenever I look on to my right side of the body, the visual aspect, my right side vision, it goes into my left occipital cortex because the visual pathway cross at the level of the optic chiasma and go to the opposite side. So whatever I look to the right side will go into my left occipital cortex and my language areas are on the left side so it can easily access. So whatever I see on the right side, I can easily convert it into language form. But whatever I see on the left side goes into my right occipital cortex. But to convert whatever I have seen or whatever I yeah whatever I have seen to convert into a language form, it has to enter the language areas. But the language areas are on the dominant cortex that is on the left side. So the information has to travel from the right occipital cortex to the language areas which are on the left side. That means it has to cross through the corpus callosum. Unlike left occipital cortex where it can have a direct access to the language areas which are also on the left side, the right occipital cortex to have access to the language areas which is on the left side has to travel to the corpus callosum. So if there is a lesion in the corpus callosum, whatever I see in the right occipital cortex cannot be transferred to the language areas. This is the basic underlying principle of alexia without agraphia. So now let's see with the diagram. So you have here the face, you have the left PCA infarct, left occipital cortex infarct. So because of that they have right homonymous hemianopia. So since the left occipital cortex is affected because of the PCA infarct, the vision has to be has to go to the right occipital cortex. But the posterior cerebral artery involvement on the left side not only affects the left occipital cortex but also the splenium of the corpus callosum where the visual information is transmitted or exchanged. So there is a left occipital cortex infarct because of the left posterior cerebral artery infarct the left occipital cortex and the spinium of the corpus callosum is affected. Since the left occipital cortex is affected, the vision has to go to the right occipital cortex. But the right visual cortex, the vision which is seen to be converted into an understandable form, into a spoken language, it has to be transferred to the angular gyrus and the language areas. But since there is a lesion, but since there is a splenium of the corpus callosum infarct because of the PCA which affects the oxidative cortex as well as the splenium of the corpus callosum, the information cannot be transferred to the language areas from the right occipital cortex. So they have difficulty in reading. They don't have problem with the vision because the oxidative cortex is intact. They can see but they cannot give meaning to whatever they see. The patient comes and says, Doctor, I am able to see but I am not able to understand what I see. So they are able to see because the visual cortex, the right side cortex is intact but they are not able to give meaning to what they see. They are not able to understand the written language. 
that is alexia so these people have alexia because of left posterior cerebral artery infarct but why are they not having agraphia that is they don't have any problem with writing there is no agraphia because whatever they hear the spoken language it goes to the vernix area and the angular gyrus which turns into the written language goes to the broca's area motor cortex and then they start writing they don't need occipital cortex and the angular gyrus is intact since the angular gyrus is intact whatever the spoken language is there whatever they hear they can turn it into a written language here there are two underlying principles one the angular gyrus and the vernix area is intact which tries to analyze the spoken language and then transfer it to broca's area and the motor area for writing and second they for writing they don't need a visual cortex occipital cortex since the angular gyrus is intact they whatever they hear it goes to the angular gyrus vernix area it tries to understand what has been told it transfers it to the motor cortex broca's area and then they write so there is no agraphia so this is a condition alexia without agraphia it is because of the left posterior cerebral artery infarct affecting both the left occipital cortex and the splenium of the corpus callosum because of which the visual information from the right occipital cortex cannot be transferred to the language areas so fantastic as i said again clinical neurology is fantastic superb if we understand the basic underlying concepts so on one hand we have gerstmann gerstmann syndrome where there is alexia with agraphia on the other hand we have left pc artery infarct where we have alexia without agraphia the patient writes and if you ask what he has written the patient the patient who has written it himself with his own handwriting with his own knowledge is not able to read he is able to see but he is not able to understand what he has written this is alexia without agraphia i have i hope you have uh, enjoyed listening to the this lecture as much as i have enjoyed delivering this lecture if you have any suggestions or comments kindly post on to my youtube channel please like subscribe my youtube channel dr sinwas medical concepts and my web page dr sinwas concepts thank you bye